Hi there, I'm Kevin McManus, Chief Excellence Officer with Great Systems. How often do you use discipline as a corrective action when someone makes a mistake? All too often, companies think discipline is the same as enforcement. Recently, I had the chance to speak at the Taproot Summit, and one of the talks that I gave was on alternatives to discipline. This first clip I'm going to share with you is about six minutes long, and it shares some of my overarching thoughts on the topic of discipline and how it's not really that effective of a corrective action. I do, however, offer alternatives. I hope you enjoy this clip, and I hope that you'll follow me so that you'll be able to see future clips on the topic. Have a great day, and keep improving. All right, how, how are you folks doing? Doing well? Great, I'm glad to have you guys here. I was tempted to make everyone move in, but no way I'm gonna do that. I want you guys to be comfortable, feel like you've got plenty of space. There's around 37 slides in this deck. I think we've got about 45 minutes. My tendency is to get caught up chatting about it all on the front end, and then I cover half the slides before we even get to slide four or five. I'm going to try to avoid doing that. However, should it, I do try to give you guys more than I often have time to get into. And this is really sincere. If you have questions about any of this stuff I'm sharing after we depart from here, please contact me. You know, my email is kevin at greatsystems.com. I'm quite happy to chat with you about this stuff. And I'm doing two presentations this afternoon, but this is the one that my heart is most closely attached to because my personal mission in life is to help as many people as I can achieve their potential. And with organizations, even though it doesn't necessarily sell well from a business perspective, my goal is really to help make workplaces more fair, fun, and focused. So the tagline for the business is, help leaders at all levels build better organizations, but my ultimate goal with organizations is to make work fair, fun, and focused. That's why this comes into play. I, this presentation today comes from three perspectives of mine. First of all, it's 25 years of working in business in a variety of roles, including production supervisor for around 250 people at a candy plant, and then my last full-time work before teaching Taproot was working at a flavored syrup company in West Seattle as a plant manager. We were a little smaller, 65, 70 people when we started, around 90 to 95, three years later when we were acquired. There was a time in my career when I would put a lot of this content up, but I would be called an idealist because it was more stuff that I'd seen in books or heard speakers talk about. But as my career went on, I had a chance to actually experience both the pros and the cons of having to enforce rules and unfortunately have to deal with situations where discipline was necessary. So I'm not gonna stand up here and be a purist and say, we should be able to retain everybody and you should never have to fire anyone. There are cases where you have to do that. However, what I'm gonna ask you guys in probably five, 10 minutes, I really want you to think about what percent of the time should you be letting folks go as the result of something that happens and primarily a rule violation, a policy violation, or even maybe a norm violation, but typically it should be a rule or policy type violation. So that's the first perspective is my experience in 25 years of business. The second perspective is teaching as a taproot instructor. This will be my 15th year of teaching, both on-site and public courses when we get to October of this year. And it's really cool because I've done around 400 courses, taught around 10,000 people, and I've seen so many different organizations. And in seeing the different organizations, I hear some where discipline maybe occurs 30, 40, maybe even 50% of the time. I have others that line up more with myself where it should rarely be used. So it really makes me interesting in my mind as to why does this happen. The third perspective I think is the most enlightening because I've been a Baldrige Examiner with the National Quality Award for 20 years. I think this is my 21st year now. This will be my second year as a judge for the process. And what Baldrige gives you is the chance to see excellent organizations. And excellent organizations as validated by their results. If you don't know anything about Baldrige, 45% of your score comes from your results. And that, that is sustained improvement over time in all areas of importance against relevant benchmarks. So these are good organizations. And normally I'd get to go and see one about every three out of four years. 
But at, once I became a judge last year, now I get to see all the applications. I don't get to go there in person, and that is significant, but I still get to see their results. I get to see the processes they use to achieve their results, and I can easily tell you that discipline is not in the criteria. You don't get positive points, so to speak, for the effective use of discipline. You do, however, get a lot of points for effective enforcement. And that might make you wonder, what's this guy talking about? I thought discipline and enforcement were kind of the same. But is, dis is enforcement always negative? No, if you look up the definition of enforcement, you don't see anything in there about punishment writing people up, issuing verbal warnings, suspending people. Enforcement looks at how do we ensure compliance to standards, policies, rules, and maybe even social norms. That's what we're looking for there. And so we, compliance with a norm could be compliance with the mission, vision, and values of the organization. It's not just rules. So as you look through this presentation, keep that in mind. Discipline is necessary at times, only I believe a small percentage of the time. I believe that if you effectively recognize good performance, both formally and informally, on a, in a meaningful manner, on a consistent basis, you will eventually get to engagement. And engagement is what's in the Baldridge criteria. We treat internal customers the same as we treat external customers. An effective organization engages its customers, and engagement doesn't mean satisfied. Satisfied is like the first step to engagement. Engagement means you would be an advocate for the organization. So keep that in mind as we go through here. Hi again. I hope you enjoyed that video clip. It meant a lot for me to be able to share it with you. Please follow me on LinkedIn and visit GreatSystems.com if you'd like some more information on this and other performance improvement topics. Also, feel free to always send me an email at kevin at greatsystems.com if you've got a question or if you've got a topic you'd like featured on this podcast. Have a great day and keep improving.